Hi, I'm Gary, and this is my story. When I was in my early 20s at uni, I was really struggling with memory, remembering things. I struggled to get my degree, even though I could understand things pretty well, and I was really interested in the science I was studying. But I just couldn't remember things for my in the exams and I struggled to I just struggled to pass my degree then after I'd finished that and I moved out of my step family home to another city I didn't I wasn't able to start a career I was just not able to get my, get my life together and I started to look into the reasons why that was what was going on with my memory issues that kept coming up about my family especially my stepmother and the way that she had been messing with my mind and then I kept going on that path trying to get my life together and not succeeding but all that time continuing digging into my past to try and work out what happened I knew that I could not remember much from my childhood and that that was unusual and I kept I just on and off just kept on doing that but then at one point when I was 29 I was going through another bad relationship with, with a narcissist and I had no idea about the patterns of narcissism in those days that's something I found out much later and then I was just standing in my lounge room and I just admitted to myself I didn't know what else to try about trying to get my life under control, get a career going, sort out my relationship issues with my memory and things like that. And I just admitted I have nothing else left to try. And as soon as I admitted that, immediately there was a little voice in my head that said I know what to do so I just stood there for a couple of seconds and thought well I don't have any answers okay I'll go with that and I just immediately started sobbing and for about three months I was just crying every day and at first I had no idea what I was crying about but after the first couple then I started to get some memory flashbacks from my childhood of sexual abuse and then some other things, a little bit of torture and stuff like that. And it all came, at, at, at first it just came in a big stream of images that gave me kind of an overview of what had happened to me. But more information came over time after that. And after that first three months of crying every day, then it, it settled, it, it, uh, it leveled off and I stopped. I stopped crying every day and often not knowing what it was about. And then I started to more and more look into what, what was going on. Was that stuff true? Was that stuff that I was remembering actually true? Because I didn't want it to be true. I knew that there were some problems in my childhood and stuff. And some of the memories that I always had let me know that there was something seriously wrong. But there just wasn't many of them. And I just had a lot of doubt about what I was remembering and whether it was really true. So I started getting on the internet and trying to find out more about it. And I went through a period of about three years of pretty intense healing work. And at the time, being involved in some healing groups for abuse. And I found, I found the people that were like me. And they talked about ritual abuse, child sex trafficking some military mind control involvement those are the people who the things that they said that 
connected with me and I still I still didn't fully believe it I knew that there was some truth to it but I just I didn't want to I didn't want to believe it I didn't want to have that on my plate so after that three-year period I thought okay I'm done a lot of healing work I've got a lot of stuff out now I want to get back to my life and keep doing things like that and just get on with living my life and being able to do what I want but I wasn't really able to do that I kept trying and things kept not working out and I knew that it was because of me my pattern my pattern was to try something new and it would not work out I would feel really overwhelmed and the little things that would go wrong would become so important I wouldn't be able to get through them and I, eventually I would just have so much energy coming up from inside that overwhelmed me about those things I just had to get out of that situation and I just kept repeating that pattern that's even until now I still do that the energy that comes up just is so overwhelming I just have to get out sometimes just get out of that situation sometimes get out of that location but that's that's the pattern of my life so while doing other things did some interesting things went and taught English overseas which was an amazing experience but what that taught me is that when I got out of Australia, things changed. I was able to do more things. I was much less fearful. But I still had all of that stuff with me and I still had those patterns. But I, when, it, when I first got overseas, I, oh, it was such a relief. It was an absolute blast. And then after time, when I realized that I was still going through those same patterns, then I was, I, I just had to admit that I had to keep doing my healing work. Even though I'd kind of been doing it off and on a little bit in the background the whole time, it wasn't, it wasn't until that time, after spending a little time overseas, that I realized that I just have to keep going with my healing work. So more and more that became the focus. And during that time, more memories came up about what happened to me, including stuff about ECT, electroshock. I just want to be clear that I don't actually have any memories of getting electroshock. But I've had nightmares about high voltage electricity and dreams about it. The things, the patterns in my life match it so well. When I look at, when I watch videos of other ECT survivors, I see that that's, that's the same pattern of my life. That explains why I haven't been able to get my life together and things like that. All of the healing work that I've done about the abuse and the release of the emotion and the correction of all of the deep beliefs that I'm still, that process is still ongoing, that's made a huge difference in my life and I've been able, been able to get some peace, peace in my life. But I haven't been able to fix those things that are consistently identified as consequences of ECT. So just um, I, I looked into executive dysfunction as the pattern that matched what I was experiencing and I find also that that, that is something that is associated with the ECT. So I can identify a name or a term that describes the pattern of damage that has been done to me. But I can't do anything about it. 
when it comes to the abuse and the beliefs, the false beliefs about myself, I can do something about that. I can purge all of all of my anger, correct all of my beliefs, but I cannot fix the damage done to my brain by ECT. I have to live out my life with that damage. So after my time overseas, I returned to Australia and then it came when I, before the plane landed. I had a, a huge panic attack come up and it took a few days after being here, back in Australia, to work out what that was about. And I realized that it was because Australia was the place where all of that happened. Australia was the dangerous place and the parts of me that weren't yet healed were absolutely terrified of coming back here. So in my time after returning here, it's I've been pretty pretty focused on just sorting out what actually happened to me, how am I affected by it, what can I do about it, what's my real situation. And 2019, this year, that has been the year when I've got those answers. I know pretty much an overview of my life. I'm able to make this video about it. I know what is fixable. I know how to fix it. I found the tools that I can use to fix, reunite my mind. And I know about the ECT and what I can't fix about that. And that's so. I, I'm faced with with two sets of problems. One is a really negative emotional set that I'm able to work on and heal and fix. And the other one is the actual permanent physical brain damage from ECT that means that I can't live a normal life. And that's my situation. So now I am I've wanted to do these videos for years and say, hey, this is what happened to me. I just haven't been able to do it because of all kinds of uncertainty, all kinds of other stuff coming up and fears and things like that. Now that I've done a lot of healing of, of the abuse, my fear has reduced a lot enough for me to be able to do this. I still have a great fear of being forced into more electroshock, which would be, that's pretty much a death sentence. To be a, to have less mental capacity than I have now would just be, it's, it would be the same as dying. So I still have some fears around that, some fears around being killed. I usually have dreams about people coming to my home and threatening me or just spying on me it's been like that every night for so many years that's just it's just a part of my healing process it's getting better it's still happening every night but it's been a while since I've had nightmares about people coming to my home and pointing weapons at me but that's that's was like that for years and the more healing work that I do about unifying my mind and getting all those parts, those damaged parts, and bringing them back and healing them, that has improved all those little things like that. So now I still you know, have dreams about people coming and stealing my things and interfering and just being present that's that's still happening but that will stop in the future when I heal those parts and that's that's the situation that I'm at now so I've managed to get to the point where I can just tell my story and 
I'm not sure what's going to happen after that. I have no idea what's coming next. And that's not, no, it's not unusual for me. But um, now is the time for me to start telling my story and to see what comes of, comes of it. In my, my higher self, just wants me to release my truth. My mind has ideas about what the consequences will be, but really, my goal is just to release my truth and let the universe do its work on that.